Hi everyone, Luke here from Figmento Films, back for another gear review. As always, we're gonna be budget conscious and looking at the bang for buck factor. And today we're looking at a light. It's the Daylight 60D Mark II from Pixapro. It's an LED cob light and 60 watts with a CRI rating of 95. Um, I really love these lights and they are relatively inexpensive as well and I'll tell you why right after this. Okay, so first things first guys, I don't expect to become some massive YouTuber. We are still in the perpetual lockdown and I wanna do gear reviews for people in the same position as me, aspiring filmmakers, um, small businesses who really need to look, be very budget conscious. It really helps me if you subscribe, you know, just, it's just nice to know uh, that you're there watching the videos and I can always interact with you on comments and if you like and share the video too, that is amazing. So more about these lights. Well, it's more to do with my story. The lights themselves are relatively simple and that's kind of what I like about them. But if I jump back to 11 years, for like 10 years I've been using a fluorescent lighting kit. It's big, clunky, fluorescent bulbs are extremely frail. Pretty proud of myself because I've only broke like two in that time because I look after my kit. Um, but they take like half an hour to set up and they take half an hour to put down and it can take very, very long uh, time, you know, it just it's just eating into your um, time whilst you're on shoot, and that can be a bad thing, especially if you haven't got long to shoot. I eventually moved to some, uh, well, added to, more of a lateral move, added some uh, panel lights by Yongno. They're really good lights, really versatile, uh, in terms of sort of like being small and portable, and they take um, Sony NPF batteries, but they, lack the versatility in terms of being able to add adapters and things of that sort of nature. And so eventually on my last job, after going through the rigmarole of setting all this gear up, which took me ages, I just decided I need some new lights and LED cub lights have got more popular and more popular over the years. Good reason for that as well. Really bright, the technology has improved massively and they're so flexible. Also, they're a lot safer because they don't run as hot as other lights. However, they do get hot, especially if you use certain lighting modifiers like a, a Snoop, for example. In fact, most, uh, most of these lights have heat sinks and fans in them. Um, so, what does the light look like? Well, you've probably seen the cool B-roll, but for scale perspective, this is the light. It's a tiny light, as lights go. Um, it's pretty light as well doesn't really weigh much uh, and for the most part it's a really solid construction when you get them there's not many bells and whistles however it does come with one of these a reflector dish which is really cool and this is a Bowens mount as well so this is this is where I love these lights because the Bowens mount is so ubiquitous that's it um, you can get loads and loads of adapters uh, as you'll see in this clip now. And ultimately, this is why I went for these lights, because from Pixar Pro's website, they go on offer quite often, and they around Christmas time, they drop to about £75. They typically run for about, uh, I think it's £95 or £99. Either way, not massively expensive. As far as build quality goes, the middle is aluminium. Uh, then there's like a tough plastic on the front, tough plastic on the back. Some weaker parts though would be, this screen feels, a, this sort of back area here feels a little bit weak and this knob feels cheap as well. Also as you're turning it, it gets a bit sticky towards the bottom of the dial. It's, you know, you'd have to be super weak not to be able to turn it, but that is a, a very small issue. Also a bigger issue I'd say was, I wish this was even uh, metal um, or like a C mount. I'd much prefer a C mount. Uh, I just think they're a lot safer and a lot sturdier as well. I don't think this light's gonna go anywhere. I've had it set up in uh, on sort of boom poles. I usually have one hanging off my ceiling. Uh, however, I've currently got a different light on there at the moment. And um, I'm 
think you're gonna be okay. I do like that there's a handle on the back as well, which is just really nice and ergonomic. One of the other features of this is apparently the Mark II is, runs a lot quieter. And I'd say it's definitely not silent. You can hear it, but it's pretty quiet. In fact, if I'll be quiet for five seconds, I'll let you see if you can hear it. The light is about one and a half feet away from me. So could you hear any hiss from the fan? I'd probably say probably not. It's an important time to also bring up that uh, if you're doing any type, any type of filming really, it's always good to get like a noise floor. So just record the natural ambient sound for like a minute. It helps massively in, um, in the edit. I love these lights and I'm over the moon with them. Some pros would be, it has a claimed CRI of 95, but I personally feel they lean a little bit to, uh, to green. Um, now this isn't, an, you know, if you, if you do your white balance and you do a little bit of correction in post, you can easily overcome this. And it should also go without saying that almost every light from a, an 100, a 100 pounds light to a 1000 pounds light have a color cast. Um, for a light without a color cast, um, I think Big Light Media have just done a video about a light which is, it's quite expensive. I think it was $2,000. You have to go and check their video out. But it does like accurate um, color on the skins and everything. It's incredible. But if you ain't got a $2,000 budget, I think these lights are perfect. It's really easy to get caught up in the amount, sheer amount of different lights that are coming out now. Some of them have uh, um, lighting effects, like they can mimic uh, what a lightning storm would be like. Some of them are sort of bi-coloured as well. This isn't bi-coloured, it's just the, it's just um, daylight coloured. Um, but none of that bothered me too much because I was really able to build my lighting kit up. Um, I've got gels, you can get CTO gels, that are relatively inexpensive. A CTO gel basically can change the colour temperature of your light. So if you want something to look more warm, you could put a CT, uh, an orange CTO gel on that. And conversely, if you wanted something to look a bit cooler, put a blue CTO gel on there. So um, it's just the versatility. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a battery pack either. It is, uh, you do have to plug in a kettle plug to use it. I'm more than okay with that. Between the rest of my lights, I'm gonna get by more than fine. And it is also possible just to get like a, jet, a camping generator and just plug the lights into them. Uh, 60 watts is pretty bright in my opinion. It's quite powerful. Would you use this on a full on movie set? Probably not, but then you'd be using movie lights, uh, which are gonna be much higher quality. But honestly, if you really are budget conscious, I think these could be a great light for you. Um, they really are quite powerful in fact. Oh yes, and I should mention, don't get a lot in the box. Uh, you get the reflector dish, but you also get a remote as well. Um, this is super handy. And I'll see how bright this gets. So I'm currently on like 64. Let's turn this up. Okay, so that's 100. I'd say that's pretty bright. And I'm also using a, uh, I'm using a, um, some diffuser as well. So I've got a couple of layers of diffusion. I'm gonna turn this back down again. I would take the diffusion off as well, but I think you get the idea. I think, there we go. So where would you use these lights? Well, um, small productions, interviews, vlogging. I think these are great. If you're looking to build a studio um, uh, relatively inexpensive, inexpensively like myself, I think these lights might be the lights for you. I absolutely love these lights. I was able to really build my lighting kit. Um, not only that, my previous lighting kit, I was able to adapt, that because the Bowens mount is just so well supported, I was able to adapt the soft boxes from my fluorescent kit onto here. And I've also got some Ellen Chrome lights and I was able to adapt the Ellen Chrome mount to use on here as well, which was awesome. Um, but I've also managed to get snoots, um, reflectors, barn doors, honeycomb grids, like it, it's so, I, can't, I cannot explain to you how amazing it is. I mean, because as you're looking at all these videos, it can be easy to think you only need the light itself. 
But in my experience, um, get it, being able to build the lighting kit with lots of t different tools that are gonna help me shape the light has been such an incredible experience, especially because I, I also shoot a lot of sort of pack photography and product photography as well. And you need really specific lights, like the Snoot, for example, uh, to really create that spotlight. I wouldn't leave a Snoot on the any type of LED light for like too long at full power, by the way, they get hot. Uh, as there's not much room for the uh, air to escape, so that's just a little tip for you. Uh, the barn doors I also brought for, like, off eBay for like 18 pounds and they are so well built. I think they're Godox ones uh, and they're really, really well be built. You can put a honeycomb grid in there and you can put a gel on there as well. I freaking love them. Um, so for bang for buck, I think these lights are amazing. Things you have to just be aware of is they do pull to the greens a little bit and I would say the only major downfall is the the mount. It's a tough plastic, but I would have preferred metal, and ideally I would have preferred a C mount. But for like a hundred a hundred pounds uh, light, I think these are really really good. So for any filmmakers out there, any vloggers, if you've been looking at LED cob lights and you've been looking at the usual sort of aperture one twenties and so forth. Great lights, if you can afford them, I would never stop you getting getting anything like that. But if you are struggling on a budget a bit like I was, I'd say go for these lights. I really enjoy them. Um, if you've enjoyed this review, like I said at the start of the video, please subscribe, like the video, share the video. I ain't gonna be some giant YouTuber. I'm just doing this to try and help everyone else out a little bit who's in the same sort of position as me. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be reviewing next, but I've got a whole bunch of things and I'm always looking for a bargain. So stay tuned and I'll catch you next time. See ya.